In this four-part film, we explore the issues and approaches surrounding training for problem-based learning facilitators in a medical education context. Through the use of semi-structured filmed interviews, information was gathered from participants attending a one-week short course on advanced topics in problem-based learning at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. The interviewees that feature in this film are medical educators that come from several universities throughout the world including South Africa, Chile, Netherlands, Saudi Arabia, Ghana, and Indonesia. This educational resource is divided into four short films involving a multifaceted discussion that explores initial facilitator development, ongoing facilitator development, feedback mechanisms on performance of PBL facilitators, and the profiles of facilitators at each university. This part of the four-part film looks at facilitator profiles, including the debate around the use of content or process experts in PBL facilitation. We have very, very kind of widespread background. So when you talk about specialities, uh, definitely they have all the basic science specialties. They can be also clinicians. It's very wide open. Everybody here at Maastricht University is a PBL facilitator, actually. We try to get from from very junior person to a professor. Everybody has to be and will be a PBL tutor. They are um, male, uh, average age uh, around 45. Um, they are all clinicians. Uh, they all uh, uh, have no educational background and uh, they are almost all uh, part-time. In my faculty, the facilitator or tutor uh, most of them female and maybe the average age 25 to 40 years old. Most of us is medical doctor. It's one of two not background of medical doctors. For, for, for now, we have for uh, the first three years uh, with the not only the medical doctor, but also the biomedical. In, in, in Saudi Arabia, we, we, ha we uh, separate men and women. So they do have faculty of medicine, but they do actually two sections. Uh, so the girls will go, it's the same curriculum, everything is the same, it's just they don't sit with each other. And so we do have facilitator ladies, and we do have a male facilitator. Um, the process of developing and selecting <coughs> and training is pretty much the same. It's just run in this, in this side and run in that side. And uh, the evaluation is pretty much the same. So uh, they both do the same action. They both do, this, do the same, uh, they follow the same rules, uh, except they just in two different sections. Because our because staff is, yeah. um, most of them is female, maybe we are mm -hmm. limited in time. Yes. We busy uh, with family and uh, have to get pregnant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Have to get so pregnant. The, yeah, maybe it's natural female are limited about the time. Yes. Okay. And uh, for the background education, most of our uh, staff is uh, are uh, postgraduate okay. medical doctors. Mm, a couple of them is a doctor, doctoral, or PhD maybe. Professor is um, about five, five person, and but most of ours is a medical based on medical doctor. Medical doctor. Mm -hmm. Still yes. medical doctor, and we we, uh, we have to improve. Uh, we need to improve it in this, uh, uh, these uh, years. A lot of hours get the, uh, better education in master programs. And of course, when you look in the clinics, they try to send their most junior staff, but 
if we look at the departments of physiology, anatomy, the basic sciences, everybody's there. The very junior people, but also the professors. So, um, but they all like education. Um, it's become a habit that you have to be a tutor. It's not about being a choice. If, do you want to be a PBL facilitator? We go to that department. We need 30 facilitators. Well, maybe for one department, we would need 10 facilitators from the physiology department. When will you come and do a course with us? According to Dr. Daniel Amawankosaki from the School of Medical Sciences at the University of Cape Coast in Ghana, their facilitators are mainly male, approximately 37 years old, are mainly clinicians or have an MPhil degree and are enrolled in a part-time PhD program. Their backgrounds range from basic scientists, clinicians, consultants, medical informatics, public health specialists, to nutritionists and demographers. Dr. Saki believes that this mix of facilitator backgrounds usually enriches tutorial sessions. Their diverse backgrounds enable them to ask probing questions which often stimulate students to consider other perspectives. On the other hand, facilitators sometimes think or feel incompetent when the focus of the scenario is outside their speciality. was you don't really need a content specialist because um, you need someone who can facilitate learning and that person doesn't necessarily need to be a content specialist. Um, but we're finding more and more that students want medical doctors um, in the tutorial sessions. For the PBL process it's not make difference because um, the tutors uh, basically should know about the PBL process itself. Mm -hmm. But maybe uh, the 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 different is uh, uh, how deep the information can get among the student in tutorial process is different maybe. But so the tutors uh, in uh, broadly um, uh, fields should be uh, what is it? Um, they should transfer the information between uh, the tutors. Uh, uh, who don't um, exactly in the medical doctor. So mm -hmm. maybe it should be a um, uh, tutorial meetings before the uh, case set in the block system. There are differing opinions um, in the literature about um, the debate around content experts versus um, process experts. So it's a bit difficult. There isn't one particular answer within the literature. Well, at the beginning here at Maastricht, we thought everybody could do it, could do the job. Um, we came back from that because you do have to know what your students are talking about. It's not only about the PBL process. We have a few psychologists who are PBL facilitators, but they, they read up on the literature, what's going on, and they're pretty involved. So I think it's, it's not possible uh, if you're not content related at all to be a good tutor. Um, unless you think only the process of PBL is important, I think you have a double job. Huh? I think coordinating the process is very important, but knowing when somebody's saying silly things or at least being aware that students are saying different things, the good thing is that they won't lecture. One, one of the things that I really like about having different backgrounds is uh, when you go back and, and, and review the facilitator job, it's really kind of wide and multitasking. So they, they are responsible, it's by name, it's facilitating. So you, it's not teaching like the conventional way, it's facilitating. So you facilitate the process of learning and you have objectives that you have to, you have to meet at the end of the, uh, let's say, the session. And so, for example, you will uh, stimulate the students, you will guide them, you will make sure that they are on the correct track, you will evaluate them, etc. And then, for example, one of the skills is communication that you will manage. And so certain areas in, in the world, for example, from what we see is they're, they're really good on this matter of, for example, communication skills. And there are, there are people that come from certain areas that are really good in knowledge and, and experience. Um, and etc. So you can really kind of select um, uh, from 
the variety of, of the different backgrounds to uh, end up with the kind of curriculum that meets every single objective and you have experts in this matter, you have experts in this matter, so you can, you can take the benefit of that. So that is basically um, the way that debate is evolving now. And Facilitator profiles differ widely between different universities. Some universities have a mix of male and female facilitators. Others have mostly female, such as in South Africa and Indonesia, and others have mostly male facilitators, such as in Brazil. These differences are largely based on local circumstances and cultural influences, which in turn, to some extent, would influence the frequency and nature of ongoing facilitator development sessions.